Hello, hello, hello. Hopefully my audio is working. Got a new mic set up. But hello. Gonna be doing some unboxing today. Figured I'd go ahead and stream it and maybe chat with a couple people who decide to tune in. So on the desk, we have the Fanatec Phonetic. Fan, 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 fin, 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 <laughs> no, um, it's the uh, Fanatec or however you want to say it. I've, I've heard different people say it different ways, but I, I believe you're supposed to pronounce it Fanatic. Fanatic? I don't know. But um, yeah, we're going to be unboxing the pedals. Um, I've used their CSL Elite pedals in the past, so this would be pretty cool um to check out their new csl dd pedals um so let's get into it oh there's a filter on that camera turn it off there we go so i've got a multi-cam setup going um let me know if you guys can hear me and if the audio sounds pretty decent if you don't mind but uh the main middle camera and the bottom is going to be what I'm filming on. So I'm using the uh, Canon EOS uh, webcam utility to be able to film and broadcast that camera. Then we've got a wide view so you can kind of see from there. And then I've got a high view. So I'm gonna be moving lights around so it could get in the way and I don't wanna have to worry about switching the camera. What's up, Lucas, how are you doing? Are you up late or are you up early? Where are you at in the world, Lucas? So yeah, I'm going to be basically just filming and hanging out and talking. So hopefully it'll give you guys an idea of what my filming process is. I did this for the, um, I did this for the, uh, CSL DD, which is way up there. I don't know if you can see it. Oh, I messed up on my car already. But um, that was pretty fun. Had some friends pop in. You're in Vietnam. Thank you for tuning in from Vietnam. That's awesome. Are you into sim racing? I'm guessing by your avatar you are. Is that a McLaren? An old school McLaren that you have there? Um, so I'm going to have to turn off the. Oh, yeah, you're looking to make a DIY. Well, well hopefully you've checked out those DIY videos I've put out. Um, I'm still working on the third video, which will be on grips, but that is a pretty in-depth video, so. It'll be good, but it's it's taking a while to produce, unfortunately, but it'll be worth the wait. Why do you keep turning off camera? um what's up big natty uh so no word on exactly when the load cell break will be available they did have it on display at the sim racing expo but uh they didn't have it on any rigs um they didn't have a price or release date so i'm still waiting to hear just like you are um but hopefully we'll get some news by the end of the year the latest i heard is they're aiming for a 200 hundred dollar price point so with the um, base pedal set, which is $79.99, and the load settle upgrade, it'll hopefully be around $200. The um, CSL Elite load settle bundle was $239, I think. So, you know, these went down $20 in price for the base set. So, hopefully, the um, uh, the upgrade will be around $200, but still no word, unfortunately. Oh, uh, get more light in here. Uh, 
Uh, what kind of rig are you on at the moment, Natty? That's overexposed. Hmm, I'm having a weird problem with this camera where it keeps turning off for no reason. And Lucas, what um what kind of gear are you on currently for sim racing? G29, that's a good way to start up. Oh, you have the uh Acelith GT3 rim. How do you like that? Um, is it the same diameter as the stock rim or is it smaller? Like what was the appeal for that rim besides the fact that it looks cool for you? Um, but yeah, as I, I film, I, uh, I'm getting video, you know, getting some nice B-roll uh, as well as taking pictures so that I can use that and, um, and video content as well. So hopefully you guys will get an idea of what it takes to put in or how much work I put in for these, uh, videos. So I get a lot of clips like this so that I can, you know, start out the video kind of revealing what the product is. Currently using um, Canon 90D as my main filming camera. And it's 4K, which is kind of nice. Um, I was shooting in 1080p for quite a long time. Not a whole lot to the boxes, to be honest. Um, <laughs> Fanatic is uh, going to a little bit more minimalist style, I want to say. Hopefully me moving this camera around doesn't make you guys sick. Ah, that's rough, Lucas. So is F1 21, 2021 like your main game? Oh, okay. You just said ACC, AC, and F1 2020. Do you like a lot of open wheel racing, I'm guessing? All right, so let's hop into the box. This guy first. Yeah, I, I've started to find out through a lot of viewers, depending on where you are in the world, it can be quite difficult to get your hands on gear, which is really unfortunate. Sim racing has grown so much in the last two years. Partially because of COVID, it, it's really unfortunate that, like, it's either really hard to get gear or it's very expensive. Hey, David, how's it going? How's the audio, you guys, by the way? This is kind of a new setup for me. I'm using the um, mod mic wireless. I don't know if you can see that in any of the cameras. Put more time, more hours in ACC. GT3 cars are kind of my bread and butter right now. Um, I'm mainly racing and iRacing. Um, just because it's so easy to get into the games, you know, or to get into races. What are you up to, David? Just hanging out? I need to increase that.
close this drawer because it's distracting. Although I'll probably crop in on things, but. And I need something to unbox this box with. I actually don't know what happened to my knife that I usually unbox stuff with. Oh, here it is. Let me redo that. I'm guessing most of you guys have seen some of my sim racing videos and kind of know the style of unboxing that I do. Oh, they give you nice little instructions on how to unbox the product. That's a little bit of a rarity. Sometimes it can actually be pretty complex to get stuff out of a box. You made a keypad button box for $15. There you go. Some racing doesn't have to be an expensive um, hobby. I think, you know, I love gear. So I got in at a G29 and then immediately started to look to upgrade just because I love testing out gear. And I've been lucky enough to have uh, companies like Logitech, Thrustmaster, and now Fnatic um, to send some products out. So, but I know there's super fast guys and pretty much every single sim who are racing with, you know, like, the least expensive wheels you can get, like a G29. And I think there can be some um, kind of snobby guys who are like, oh, you know, G29, that's a toy. But I mean, we're all playing games anyway, so none of this stuff is like real race car equipment. Just race and have fun. And if your tastes change and you want more expensive gear, then pick up some more expensive gear. I don't know why everybody has to be so defensive or exclusive about their purchase. So how can I film this and not get into the light is the biggest question. That's the sound of the box, not my farting or anything. So that's actually about it in there. I do like uh, Fanatic's um, packaging. They use really nice, dense closed cell foam. It's not too over the top. I think a lot of companies are moving towards um, a little bit more minimal packaging. You can still have a good unboxing experience if the product is there. You know what I mean? You don't have to have like a bunch of superfluous stuff or what I feel is often superfluous. So first up we have the manual, RTFM. I answer so many questions in videos and on forums and on Facebook groups where if people would have just read the quick start guide, it would have solved all their problems. But you know, I understand not everybody's a a manual reader but i really like it when people try to help themselves first if that makes sense instead of just like immediately going on the internet and not even googling it but most of the time just asking other people to help them i don't know i, I enjoy helping people but i also think that people should take a little bit of like effort to initially try to solve their own problem does that make sense Yeah, and, and vaping, I feel like any kind of like 
not even niche, but any kind of subject matter. You're just going to have people who feel like they, they won't need to feel like they're better than others. And I think that might have to do with just like where they are and what they're doing in other parts of their life. So here we have the heel plate. This uh, goes together kind of similar to the old CSL Elite, but this is feels like steel. Um, and it's not like uh, stamped or cast steel. It's it's bent and drilled out. It's pretty hefty, actually, which is good because it'll help keep the front of the pedals weighed down. Um, because especially if you have a, a harder to press in brake pedal, the brakes will tend to tilt up a lot. So or the pedals will tend to tilt up when you press them in. So having a nice kind of hefty heel plate is nice. And it, of course, it's a place to put your heel. It's also got some rubber kind of grommets on the bottom of it, I presume, so that you don't scratch up whatever surface you might have them on. And then we have the two pedals. Um, so let's see, which pedal is this? It looks like it is the brake pedal. So the construction of this is interesting. It, it diverts a lot from the CSL Elite, which had um, kind of cast steel arms, I believe. And these have got these, I think this is aluminum uh, by the feel of it, but it's a, a nice finish, but it's gone for these kind of like U channel setup, which is actually what, um, fanatic. I keep trying to make myself pronounce it that way has used in the past. Some of their old, like CSR, I think pedals were set up this way. This has a very similar sponge, um, stopper on it to what the CSL elite pedals had, but I hear it's a little bit harder to press in or might have better feel. Coming out of it, we also have this RJ cable, uh, which plugs into something. I'm not sure. I'm not sure if they all plug into like a central box or what, but that's the one pedal. Then we also have the gas pedal. So of course this base pedal set comes with two pedals, but then I have the third clutch pedal um, in another box. So also a diversion from the CSL Elite, we've got this plastic foot plate. Um, there is an upgrade kit you can get that has a, um, I guess they're metal, I think, foot plate, but it also has this kind of round style to it, which reminds me of like Tilson pedals, if you've ever seen those. And then it looks like the module is on the gas pedal. So we'll plug um, a wheelbase or, Oh, this will go out to the load base or excuse me out to the wheelbase or a load cell module and then you can plug in the brake and the clutch into this so this is like the central brain if you don't have any other pedals hooked up but if you do hook up other pedals it'll go into the load cell module did i say that right i'm not sure hopefully you guys get what i mean but the last stuff in here we've got a cable and an allen key And then some hardware that just spilled all over the place. Great. So Allen key, oh, actually it's not Allen, it's Torx of some type on both sides. So we can screw everything together. We've got the RJ cable to go out to a wheelbase. And then we've got these two spacer type things. I'm not sure exactly what they do yet. And then a bunch of hardware and some more of those rubber grommets. And I think that might be it. Yep, I don't feel any more heft besides that silica packet.
if you guys have any specific questions feel free to let me know i'm just going to be chatting talking to myself so this is everything that comes in the base pedal set i guess one thing to note is that the base pedal set has to go into a wheelbase there's no way to use it as a standalone usb device which was the same as the um, CSL Elite pedals. Let's get some B-roll shots of this stuff. Boom, 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 boom. I just noticed that the uh, the foot plate on the um, gas pedal or brake pedal is much wider than the yeah on the <laughs> I can't speak right now it's getting late the foot plate on the brake pedal is much wider than the accelerator which think aligns with what typical cars are like three times the price uh i can understand why you want to diy and there's a certain like fulfilling you know aspect about using a di you know Building your own will, knowing everything about it. Having a rising desk is kind of nice for filming. All these cables in the background. But we need to go back down this anyway hey Dirk how's it going where are you at tonight where are you tuning in from also where are you from uh natty I know Lucas is from Vietnam. And also, if you don't mind, what type of uh, do you do sim racing? Okay, Natty's from Ohio. I have family in Ohio. Um, I have a lot of family in Columbus, actually. But Dirk, if you're into sim racing, what type of um, sim racing setup are you on? What what sims do you like to play? Very interested to kind of find out what you know, what type of setups viewers are on, what they're into. Um, hopefully, it help me make a little bit more and better content. Uh, what part of Ohio are you from, Natty? I can see finger smudges and they're triggering me. Life of a YouTuber.
so i guess good time to talk about the finish on these they're kind of a semi-gloss but textured and they're a hard plastic maybe an abs maybe a nylon build cincinnati okay i've never been been through cincinnati or around hello fox sound how are you doing thanks for popping in we are doing a filming and chill stream for those who are just joining i'm unboxing the csl pedal from fanatic and i figured i'd do it on stream and chat with some people get to know some people um we actually just surpassed 16.3 thousand viewers or subscribers on youtube which is pretty cool um I took a little bit of a break off from YouTube and came back and really got into the sim racing gear and people people seem to be really enjoying it. So that's a a pretty cool feeling to come back and have the channel grow. You know, a lot of people take a break from YouTube and come back in and it can be really hard for um for them to get going again. So this is another cool aspect about the desk. I can use it to get some kind of cool b-roll uh so i guess we can take a closer look at the gas pedal now so both these pedals i think by default use hall effect sensors which is nice the CSL Elite pedals use potentiometers for the non-load cell pedals, and um, I didn't have any failures on mine, but a lot of people have noticed that, uh, or noted that, you know, the potentiometers eventually can wear out, or you can get dust and grime into them, and they can uh, become, you know, they can read falsely and not, not be the best. So Hall Effect sensors use a magnet, and there's actually a, a pretty thick permanent magnet in here that I'm going to get some B-roll of. And when that magnet moves closer and further away. Uh, for the pedal camera, do you mean this, this center middle camera right now? Or do you mean in my sim racing videos, Lucas? Uh, this center camera that I'm filming on is a Canon 90D. In my sim racing videos, I have a cheap wise cam, um, inexpensive wise cam. It's like a $13 camera that I put a firmware on. So it's supposed to be like an IP cam, but I put a USB firmware on it so that it acts as a webcam. So this camera in the bottom right is also one of those cameras. Um, it's a really inexpensive wise cam. Um, v2 i think and then the camera over in the the main top camera is a canon m50 mark ii and then the camera that has the really super high angle is a logitech stream cam so you know don't have like a, a dslr on every single part of my setup but this works or i hope it works So pretty set, um, simple, pretty simple setup uh, for these pedals. I mean, they're not all that different than something like the uh, Logitech pedals, to be honest. In terms of, if you've ever seen the inside of the Logitech pedal, you know you've got this vertical arm, which is just a U channel. And then it pushes down a spring. Um, these are, in terms of construction and the, the base construction, very, very similar to that. Uh, much longer arms, which can mean a much longer uh, travel, which some people really, really like, especially for like a throttle so that you can get um, a lot of, you know, control over modulating the throttle. And let's see this brake pedal, how it compares to the Logitech brake pedal. I think it's a bit softer, judging with my hands. I don't know. I'll have to try it with my feet later. Mm. I think they're actually pretty on par. 
but the travel is just so much longer on this you can really modulate it a whole lot better Uh, so now let's get some detail shots of just the gas pedal. Raise the desk a little bit more. Oh, I think I'm maxing out the motors on these on this desk. Sometimes it just doesn't like to go up higher. Probably got way more stuff on it than what they intend people to have. If anybody else has any questions, let me know. You guys are helping me um, entertain myself and stay sane while I do all this filming. Usually it's just me alone in my room by myself staying up way too late Oh, you're heading out, Natty? Hey, thanks for uh, popping in. Um, I, I appreciate people coming in and chatting for a little while. I understand the need to get to sleep. Uh, I've got like an hour left on my clock before I need to, to head to bed. So we're going to see how much we can get done and uh, keep chatting with you guys. But have a good night, Natty. Oh, thanks for uh, thanks for the compliment, Fox Sound. I, uh, I put a lot of work into the videos. Hopefully people can see that from uh you know compared to some other sim racing channels um that have a different style i really like to go for um oh is the stream dropping oh no fox sound how's the stream going on twitch oh thank you for the sub man i appreciate it yeah i'll, I'll have a video out on um the csl dd soon um, I'll have a video out on I'm dropping a lot of frames and I don't know why I don't have much else open Hmm Let me know if the stream is going in and out for you guys That's frustrating I'm getting thirsty though. My internet is just like dropping like crazy. Stupid Comcast. Now I know what a bunch of other uh, streamers and content creators go through. Like it keeps going down to like 10. No, I'm not downloading anything that I know of. No prawn, certainly. Uh, let me close some apps. I mean, a, another computer on the network might be um, downloading an update to something, but. Yeah, that's frustrating. This is the first time it, it's happened that I am aware of. Uh, I'm gonna get back to filming. Let me know if it um if it's real, real bad, and I might restart the stream. It's 
I can't remember what I filmed last. It's not bright enough. Uh, let me check if anything is downloading on the system. I've got Spotify. Oh, I've got Epidemic Sound going. A few tabs open, but mostly just monitoring the stream. Oh man, this is frustrating. Let me turn off the other PC. Crap. That doesn't make any impact. All right, I've turned off every other PC in the house. Let me know if it continues to, to be really laggy. Oh, looks like we had a follow. It sounded like we had a follow, but I don't see it. <laughs> Streamlabs be tripping. Hmm, how can I get more light on that? That's probably too much light now. Yep. It's still lagging. Oh, my goodness. I don't know what to do. I didn't have this problem uh, on the last stream. I am using Restream. Um which streams out to both Twitch and YouTube simultaneously. Well, it can stream out to more than just that, but. I'm gonna run a speed test. Oh, my upload is terrible right now. I think it's just Comcast being throttly. Sorry about that, guys. I am very new to live streaming.
but in that bottom middle camera I hope you can see this is the magnet and then the hall effect sensors is inside of this module you can see how small it is and as the magnet is moving it's um, modifying an electric field which is read by the hall effect sensor and then that is basically used with a um, analog to digital converter to get a reading from like zero to I don't know maybe 16,000 64,000 depends on what type of sensor they use and what type of mo um, MCU they use Uh, no, Lucas, I don't stream very regularly. Um, I'm trying to do it more often. I've been playing around a lot with OBS and Twitch and Restream, trying to just um, get into the the habit of it. Um, I, I used to stream a little bit of iRacing on uh, Twitch every once in a while. But, um, you know, I've got so many followers here on YouTube um and not a follow a lot of followers on twitch so i figured maybe i'd try this re restream thing out and just see where people are watching um it looks like we've got foxhound on twitch and then um a few people watching on uh youtube so you know i figured i'd just try throw some spaghetti at the wall and see what sticks um you know who shows up where always looking for feedback by the way Oh, so I just got a message from um, a company who is interested in sending me a uh, desktop CNC. Um, it's a, a fairly like low, lower end one, a, a nice entry level desk, uh, desktop CNC machine. So that'll hopefully make for some good content. Let me message them back. Ow. Stepping on cables. Uh, let's see what else is interesting about these pedals. We've got rubber feet on the bottom. That'll be good to point out. Uh, they look really nice in general. Uh, the, the finish on them, the craftsmanship. Got a couple little scratches that I can't tell if they were already on there or if they're from me moving them around. Yeah, I can see my bitrate is just like hopping around like crazy. I don't think my internet service provider is uh, liking it. So I'll have to learn more about that and probably make a change. So technically these pedals can be individually mounted, which is kind of cool. You don't have to use the hill plate if you don't want to, which also means it's fairly gonna be fairly easy to mount them in a inverted setup if that's what you like. I've been surprised how many people are pretty frequently asking about, can you invert these pedals? Um, to me, there's not a whole lot of appeal in inverting pedals, but it seems that other people really are into it.
So yeah, I'm super excited about, you know, being able to have a desktop CNC to start, you know, experimenting with. Um, I think they also have a laser module that you can get to go on it. And I think that'll be really cool for DIY sim racing stuff to have um, a laser to do some etching on. Uh, probably won't be powerful enough to do any actual cutting, but yeah, I'm, I'm excited about that. That'll um, open up some some cool opportunities and projects, I think. That's a little hot. So there you can see the stop. That prevents it from going any further. And I think that's all that's particularly interesting about the gas pedal. I do want to show the difference in the size of the pedal faces. So it looks like the bodies are almost identical, you know, a very modular design, which is, I guess, smart, makes the common components as similar as possible, and then change the ones that are different or need to be different. This would be kind of a cool shot. So I shoot a lot of B-roll beforehand. I don't really have like a, a, set, a set shot list, which I think some other um, content creators tend to do, but I mean, I just know a certain amount of stuff that I, I'm gonna wanna film and, and show. So as soon as I'm unboxing stuff, I generally try to, uh, you know, do that. So now let's take a look at the brake pedal. I mean, it's got a cable coming out of it, obviously, which goes into the other um, pedal. And I believe if you pick up the low tail conversion kit later you can use this as a um a clutch if you want a third pedal so you got some versatility there you can order the clutch kit which i'm gonna unbox in a little bit or you can um just utilize the pedal that you already have that's the way it worked with the csl elite at least And yeah, there's not much different on this guy to show besides the um, the kind of uh, sponge, which creates uh, the resistance and feel of the pedal.
I gotta find a way to try to like depress this pedal without like blocking all the light and getting my hand too much into the shot. Hopefully that gives you an idea of kind of how this creates a little bit of resistance. So as you press it in further, it gets progressively harder to press in. And that gives you brake feel so you can modulate the pedal. Um, the pressure that you need to put into it increases, but it's still using just using a Hall effect sensor. Uh, they're eventually going to be releasing a load cell upgrade, but no word on that when that will be released or the exact pricing. But yeah, other than that, the pedals, other than the pedal faces, the pedals are pretty much identical. Uh, is there adjustment on this? No, I don't think so. All right, so now we can look into how to actually assemble these. Hmm. I do kind of want to show everything that comes along with it. I tend to do that. Kind of like, here's everything that comes in the box. Well, tool, these tube guys. I need to read the uh, instructions, figure out exactly what those are for. The little sticky feet. And then a bunch of hardware. They do not seem to give you any mounting hardware, so. Not sure if they foresee this primarily being used on the floor when you have it in this configuration. We'll see how much they tip over. If you guys are watching and haven't chimed in, um, I'm very interested to know what type of hardware our viewers are using and what type of sims they're playing. So if you are a big advocate of a particular sim or you have a setup or you have any questions, feel free to chime in. Some of this packaging out of the way. Hopefully the stream is doing better. I don't know what was up. I assume it was just my ISP kind of freaking out. I don't really like that shot. Maybe from a little bit more top down. Just the lighting isn't good for seeing the pedals and everything else. Uh, let's just get these detailed things real quick. I still can't see those screws very well. There we go. Screws, little feet, some kind of spacer thing. Torx wrench. And I just noticed that the uh, RJ cable has a choke on it. So um, that's them thinking ahead. It's got two chokes on it. 
I, one thing that has been a big problem for a lot of people in sim racing is dealing with EMI, electromagnetic interference, also um, grounding issues of rigs. You've got a oftentimes very high powered motor uh, with high powered magnets inside of them, permanent magnets, electromagnets, um, and they produce a lot of electromagnetic interference. So having chokes on any kind of cabling uh, can be really, really beneficial. A lot of times what happens is you'll get false readings from uh, peripherals like pedals, keyboards, um, a lot of other type of USB items because the electromagnetic interference can cause just like weird wonkiness to go on. And USB is a very, very, very finicky uh, um, uh, connection protocol. It can be a real pain in the butt to uh, program, but also kind of like uh, troubleshoot And not all manufacturers really have the same kind of like grounding strategy, I found out. Some manufacturers of hardware try to just make sure that their hardware doesn't produce any EMI. Others try to make sure they don't produce any EMI and respond well to other EMI. So they shield theirs very well, but like, you know, you can't guarantee That any given product um, isn't going to interfere with another. That's an ugly shot. I don't really like. But now let's hop into the manual and see what they say about putting these together. So you get the little feet that go on the front to help protect your surface. You obviously put these in line with the hill plate. I don't know how well you can see that. Screw things in and don't pinch the cables. and use these eight millimeter holes to mount them to your rig. There's also six millimeter holes on the front to mount to the rig somewhere. Okay, so there's a threaded hole in the bottom of the front that you can screw through your surface and into the wheel deck or heel plate. Okay, that's pretty simple. So if you were going for a two pedal setup, oh, I'm guessing these go over this thing to act as a spacer. And then you've got cable management on the inside. That's actually an interesting thing to note. Oh, Lucas just saw your comment. What do you think is the best method to make a DIY will? Um, I think that really depends on your skill set and the resources and tools and services you have available to you. Um, for me in the United States, I've been able to find, uh, you know, carbon fiber cutting companies. Um, I'm also very handy at programming and soldering. Um, I studied computer engineering in, in school. So I'm going to use my, you know, skill sets, the, the assets I have available to me to produce a wheel. I think ideally a wheel would be, you know, very strong, as lightweight as possible. So carbon fiber is a good option for that. But, um, you know, you can produce a really good wheel with an aluminum plate as well. Um, 
And then, you know, like when it comes to electronics, it depends on, are you good at programming? Because you can use something like an Arduino if you are. If you're not good at programming, you can get something like just a, um, a joystick adapter that lets you plug in a bunch of buttons and then it just shows up as a joystick. Um, some people prefer replica wheels, you know, a wheel that looks exactly like a real life wheel. And some people prefer uh, a DIY wheel that looks, you know, like what they want it to, you know, like space aged or super classic, you know, or Ferrari themed. Um, so it's hard for me to say, you know, what the best way to produce a wheel is. I think it's just, uh, whatever you can achieve. And then after you produce your wheel, how can you make it better? How can you build a second wheel that, you know, you learn things from the first time and you make the, all those things better. Um, not sure if that answered your question, but. I do go over a lot of that in my DIY wheel video series that I have part one and part two. Part one talks about kind of all the aspects of building a wheel and part two specifically goes over um, uh, what you need to think about in terms of a front plate. Different materials, different thicknesses, cutting services. Let me know if that makes sense, Lucas. How soon these go in there? But nothing retains them, which is a little weird. And these will go one here and you can just screw straight down into the faceplate. I mean, that's pretty easy in terms of assembly. Uh, how can we arrange this? What is the optimal distance for how far apart pedal should be let me know in the comments below this will be completely centered i think aluminum is a great place to start and you know um you can paint it all black you can get some carbon fiber vinyl and i've seen a lot of really convincing looking um carbon fiber wraps on wheels uh carbon fiber is kind of i think an advanced kind of material to go for it's pretty expensive to get it cut it's pretty dangerous to cut yourself um so honestly i think it's aluminum is a really good bet we have a lot of services in the u.s that can cut aluminum at a pretty cheap rate i don't know what it's like internationally though Um, so it looks like it's just align the holes on the front and then screw stuff in and that's assembly done. Kind of sucks when you have like a, a bright silver and a dark black in the same shot. You can't get both to be like, I guess I can change the angle of the lighting. But still, it's hard to get both kind of, one not being too dark and the other not being too bright. Let's see how I can film this.
Yeah, but yeah, in terms of like uh, DIY wheels, I consider most of my projects to be kind of continued ongoing type projects where I'm learning over and over and over again um, or continuing to learn, you know, better ways to make stuff. And in some regards, it's less about the final wheel for me and more about learning how to do a lot of the stuff. If that makes sense. If you haven't already joined the turn turn racing discord, there's a huge number of resources. There's a lot of people from a lot of different countries. Um, I think there's a few people from uh, Southeast Asia on there, not specifically Vietnam, but uh, possibly some neighboring countries that might have an idea of, um, you know, or be able to tell you services they've used resources they have to be able to um get electronics and stuff like that can't guarantee it but um it's a great place to to get a lot of resources uh zach the owner of turn racing is also pretty Pretty awesome, pretty cool guy. I've worked on with him on some stuff. I have a video I've been working on for him, showing off something. Hopefully I'll be able to finish that up. But it's like, I didn't have very much in terms of video to make for a really long time. And then all of a sudden, like 17 opportunities pop up. You know, it's like it never rains, but when it rains, it pours or whatever. It's like oh let me think about the content i want to make and then all of a sudden it's like make this content make this content damn it wish things could be spaced out better like you know getting the opportunity to do videos on all this um fanatic stuff is pretty sweet i'm hoping i can you know provide some slightly different insight to what a lot of people have already gotten um i've kind of started from the bottom with the g29 and have a lot more experience with entry level wheels so i think that's the sort of angle so to speak i'll be taking when i talk about these pedals and the csl dd is you know a lot of people are comparing the csl dd to other dd wheels you know two thousand dollar dd wheels and i'm like i don't think anybody who's thinking about buying a $2,000 CSL D, you know, or a $2,000 direct drive wheel is also thinking about buying a five, uh, three to $600 DD wheel, in my opinion. Um, that just doesn't make sense to me. Uh, so I, I don't think it honestly makes very much sense to compare it to, uh, super, super more powerful wheels, super, super more expensive wheels. Um, Kind of silly to me. I think people considering a CSL DD, some of them might be on the verge of considering maybe they'll make the jump up to something more expensive, but um, I think the, the group they're aiming at and a lot of people considering it are more like people upgrading from... Um, lower end stuff thrustmaster logitech so on and so forth so this is my break that we're gonna plug in Which way does that actually go? That's why I believe. Is that clear chat? Could you see that? Is that pretty evident what I'm doing there? And then you can also cable manage. I like little cable management clips built into gear like this. I know they probably have to worry about people putting together gear and pinching cables and just destroying 
the product, so it's probably beneficial for them in that regard. Companies have to deal with a lot of just weird and jankiness that people deal with. You know, there's legit problems where people get a brand new product and it breaks down, but sometimes people are just like, I didn't read the manual and I messed this up. Too bad, so sad. Nah, I try to be sympathetic for people. I've had problems with technology. This camera broke. It just completely stopped working about a year and two months, which just happened to be out of warranty. But thank goodness I bought a um, extended warranty plan from Amazon on this. And I was able to get it fixed, but I had to go three weeks without having my main camera, which really sucked and slowed me down. And it's one of the reasons I'm, I haven't gotten around to being able to produce content on this. Oh, what else is there? Oh, there's plugging this cable in as well to go out to the wheelbase. Again, a big thing to consider is if you are using the base CSL pedals, they have to go through a wheelbase. If you eventually get the CSL load cell, then they can act as a standalone set of pedals. And that's the same way the CSL Elite pedals worked. Main thing is that you don't want your cables to get pinched. So tuck them in a way that they won't. That's really all there is to setting up these pedals. That's nice and straightforward. Um, it's a good balance, I think, of providing flexibility in terms of the way you set it up. You can really adjust the width a whole lot. Um, you can't really adjust the height anyhow, besides, you know, if you have a pedal deck. But, you know, you've got... One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven 10, 11 different spots. You can place two to three pedals. Um, you know, I guess you at a minimum need two pedals, gas and brake. Uh, so that's pretty much it for that guy. I guess we can unbox the third pedal now. I tend to want to use all three pedals. I really like playing um, some Sims and games that allow you to use a manual gearbox. So I'm generally always gonna want three pedals. Um, even though I drive a lot of GT cars primarily, it's really fun to kind of, I used to love the old Mazda, the old, now old, defunct Mazda in iRacing that was a, a manual. It was rare on most tracks, but, uh, you know, where you had a really tight corner and you, you go all the way down from fifth gear down into second or first gear and you're heel toe shifting. That always felt really cool to me. Still does. But they changed the Mazda to a sequential in real life and then they made it reflect that in iRacing so I think the the Mustang in iRacing still has a manual transmission I'm not sure how many other cars do 
I guess all the NASCARs will also be moving to sequentials. Dying breed manual transmission cars. Anybody still out there? Anybody still tuning in? Any lurkers? Lurking is cool. I'm not mad at lurkers. I lurk in a lot of people's uh, streams. From time to time. Oh, I'm still recording. Whoopsie. Whoopsie. So this is just a single pedal that you can get optionally if you really want to have three pedals because you're like me and like to use Manual transmission cars. Otherwise, you can just program like a button as a clutch. A lot of people like to do that. Or you can use anti stall, you know, whatever option in the game allows you to just uh, automatic clutch basically. So that you don't stall off the car. Or if you're using a uh, car with a manual transmission, but you don't have the necessary stuff, then it'll automatically clutch for you. We again, have a quick start guide. Comes with screws, the pedal, and a little wrench. Can't see that at all on the video but the process is the same it's the same and you just plug this guy into the uh clutch spot one thing i've been trying to do is condition myself to pronounce the name of this brand fanatic as fanatic and not fanatec I think the first time I heard anybody say it, they said it Fanatec, and a lot of people still say it that way. So, you know, that's the way I've always thought of it. But uh, I've been told numerous times by a couple people that it's supposed to be fanatic, as in like, I'm a fanatic of these pedals. So now it's like somebody's name. In terms of general communication, if you don't get it exactly right, it's understandable, but you know, I try to make an effort to pronounce people's names right. Um, so this looks like it's almost exactly the same as the gas pedal, but a um, different faceplate. So the faceplate is about as thick as the brake pedal, but otherwise, it's like exactly the same from what I can see. Got more grease in here, but the load cell sensor, the permanent magnet. Larger spring. I feel like the return force on these might be a little bit heavier than the uh, CSL elites. Maybe not. I could be imagining that. So you also get the four screws and the tool. And that is it. Hey, what is up? What should I call you? You've got a longer name. Kamong Hendry Kusuma Stardana. What can I call you for short? I was just talking about like I try to pronounce everyone's names correctly, but um, I'm not great at 
languages, so excuse me if I don't pronounce it right. Uh, it looks like the stream is performing well now. I'm green in terms of um, uh, not dropping any frames and stuff like that. Uh, so installing this third pedal will essentially be exactly the same as the first two. Presumably this one would be all the way over to the left. I guess I can film this. Oh, I am filming it. I forgot to stop recording, so. If the uh, stream quality has improved since you've been in here, feel free to let me know. I'd appreciate it. So yeah, it looks like even if you get a clutch kit, these will not operate as a standalone pair of pedals. The only way to make them standalone is to get the, uh, eventually, uh, the pedals that eventually, uh, the load cell pedal upgrade that it will eventually be released. It's getting late. Can't talk all that well. I'm gonna call you Sardana for the moment. If uh, you'd rather be called something else, let me know. But welcome to the stream. Thanks for tuning in. Thank you to everybody who tunes in. I'm gonna try to do some type of streaming more often. Um, as I mentioned, I, I like to chat with people while I'm doing stuff like this. Uh, makes the time go by a little bit easier. Doesn't slow me down necessarily all that much. So let's see about spacing. So if you're super weird and like everything to be evenly spaced, you can space it out that way. Typically, I think, you know, the clutch is a little bit further over to the left, a little offset from the gas and brake. The brake is usually somewhat centered and the gas is a little bit further over to the right. Um, and if you hill toe, you're going to want these to be reasonably close. So let's see what we can do. Um, it looks like the clutch will get plugged in over here. I'm just going to plug it in for now. Keep track of the cable. Make sure these don't get pinched. Put that guy back on. Figure out our general spacing. I would think I would want the gas to be not all the way over to the right. So when you're driving a GT car, you're not like completely shifting, shifting your hips over and legs over. Then the brake. And then the clutch to be all the way over to the left. And then that'll help me figure out spacing for the brake. Which it looks like is going to be like almost centered. Is that centered? One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Eh. I don't know how I feel about that. Uh, part three of the DIY Dreamwheel video will be coming out when I am able to actually finish uh, all the different types of 
grip uh, processes that I, I've been working on. So um, I've got 3D printed grips, of course. I've got 3D printed grips out of TPU, 3D printed grips where you embed the nuts inside of the grips. Um, I've been working on trying to figure out and learn how to do uh, casting and molding grips. So, you know, actually getting more professional like grips like you get on real racing wheels. And then the last process I'm working on is um, resin printing uh, grips. I have a Elegoo Mars resin printer and I got a couple different types of um, resin to try printing grips from. So the idea of the video is to try to cover all the different processes you can use to produce grips. And um, I'm trying to get all those kind of processes figured out and done before I put out the video. So um, I know it's been taking a while, but uh, I want it to be as complete of a video as possible. So I don't have to make five different videos if that makes sense because then i have to refer to this video and refer to that video or completely restate everything i already said in one video so uh yeah so i guess there's no option but to um have the clutch all the way over to the left that makes the most sense to me And you can always redo this, obviously, so you don't have to get the perfect setup immediately. I guess my main concern is going to be the gas and the brake. Um, I can basically completely evenly space them, but then I'm worried about heel and toe being a bit harder. I've got big feet, but... Maybe I'll start out that way, somewhat evenly spaced, and then adjust whichever pedal I need to. I think that is where it would be nice if the pedal faces could be adjusted, because then you don't have to completely disassemble the whole setup in order to make a, a small adjustment. I don't know if it's an actual like practical use case, but some people might switch from GT cars to uh, manual cars a lot, production type cars, and maybe they want to, you know, adjust the pedals specifically for that. It would be a lot easier to um, adjust just pedal faces than completely kind of disassembling one of these pedals. But uh, I hope that made sense, Lucas, in terms of like, um, why it's taking so long to get part three of that video out i'm also having to split my time between you know my full-time job and the diy stuff that i'm into um as well as just other personal projects and producing this type of content on you know i have this awesome opportunity to work with um fanatic to create videos on their products which are some of the best mass-produced products on the market so it's kind of something you can't really turn down if that makes sense so that's evenly spaced let's start out like that You know, that's, this is what pedals like the um, Logitech and the Thrustmaster start out as. But then you can adjust their pedal faces. And one last screw.
we'll turn it over and route all the cables. I really do like that uh the cable management ties it's a small thing but again it probably helps them have less rmas from people pinching their cables against their rig or in the screws but it's a nice little touch this one i guess can kind of be free and these two spacers go on here if you're going to hard mount them, I assume, to some kind of a rig. Take this cable out for now to get some more B-roll shots. I have so many stickers now. I can sticker bomb anything with all these stickers. Unsightly cables and other accessories out of the way. Hey, Toast, how's it going? Sleety Toast. Thanks for hopping into the stream. We are doing a unboxing and filming stream. Um, I did one of these recently for the CSL DD. Um, that should be public on the channel. But um, it's just me doing my whole process of um, unboxing and doing the kind of filming of some uh, sim racing gear like I, I do for videos and then streaming it so I can talk to you guys. So thanks for hopping in. Are you into sim racing, Sleety? You prefer Sleety or Toast or the whole thing Sleety Toast? Hello, Norman from the Bermuda Islands. Welcome. Thanks for hopping in. Just explaining. Um, I film all this stuff and I decided recently that, hey, I might as well stream while I'm filming some of this stuff so I can chat to people. I'm really interested in... Um, Knowing what type of sim gear you guys have, what type of sim gears you guys are interested in. Um, toast, okay. Thanks for hopping in. But uh, yeah, I, I figured I could chat with people and find out more about the audience, what you guys are into. <clears throat> Excuse me, got a cough. And then also get some work done, so. Um, and if anybody's, you know, interested in YouTube, um, hopefully this gives you a little bit of an idea of like the type of work that gets put into making videos. Um, I'm sure not everybody works exactly like I do, but. Uh, so I unboxed everything. There's a 
a host of boxes all the way over by my closet and um now i'm filming a bunch of b-rolls b-roll i've been setting up the pedals um you know getting them all hooked up doing the cable management and uh yeah now we're gonna film a whole bunch more b-roll Yeah, there's a couple of YouTubers and Twitch streamers I follow. One guy's name is Teha Types, and he does custom keyboard, mechanical keyboard uh, streams, and he just streams like unboxing stuff, um, building the keyboards, doing B-roll, and I, I really enjoy those streams, so I figured maybe I can do a little bit of the same, jock his style a little bit, be a little bit more interactive with um, with you guys uh the channel has been growing which is really really cool um so thank you to everybody who's been watching videos uh you know it's really cliche but everybody says like and share but that really really helps um i can look at analytics and tell when people are coming in from a video being shared and some of my most popular videos are from people uh sharing so that's really cool to see um it shows that people are finding the videos helpful and like actually trying to help other people with it Uh, so what are some cool angles we can get of this guy? I like that Fanatec logo. Fanatic logo. Fanatic, 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 Fanatic. I was talking about earlier, apparently... It's supposed to be pronounced Fanatic. Like, I'm a fanatic of this team. But the first way I heard it was Fanatec. So that's the way I've always kind of pronounced it. Or thought of it. So I like to do a lot of focus pulls, a lot of pan and tilts. Do a really slow pan, and then when you're kind of talking about a specific part, of a product you can overlay that footage onto it it's called b-roll usually your a-roll is kind of you talking but the b-roll is uh you know extra content that you put on top oh cool so you're really into like immersion norman um trying to get as, as real as possible that's the cool thing i think about sim racing is different people have different you know wants and needs right um some people just want to hop on and hoon around and drive around their favorite cars some people um want to be competitive in esports and they may not be all that concerned about immersion they just want you know good gear that'll help them be fast and then other people are super super interested in being like extremely immersed you know immersed so vr or triples um having the best uh force feedback and all that kind of stuff you're on a g923 how are, how are you liking it is it your first wheel Jax? um you know that was actually the first wheel that i got sent out by a company oh uh, you're eyeing the CSLDD. well i i i do have one here um, I'm going to be doing a lot of content around it. Um, so if you have any specific questions about the CSL DD, let me know. But uh, I think the G923 is a cool wheel. Um, a lot of people, to be honest, hated on it because it wasn't the wheel that they wanted. You know, they wanted essentially like a, a DD wheel from Fanatec. But um, I like the improvements over the G29. Like if you offered me... For the same price, G29 or G923, I would take the G923. Uh, other people don't think that there's any differences in them, but, you know, some of those people didn't even use the wheel. So, whatevs. I hope you're enjoying it, though. Um, get in where you fit in, you know. Use whatever gear you can get into sim racing at and then improve your setup as you go. 
I can tell you that uh, I've briefly used the CSL DD to um, get the drivers installed, and I just hopped in iRacing for like literally 30 seconds to make sure the force feedback worked. And I tried it in both five Newton meter mode and eight Newton meter mode, and it's pretty awesome. Um, in either mode, I think the eight Newton meter is obviously preferable because you get that much um, more torque out of it and you get that much kind of resolution. But um, I can totally see some people getting the $350 base level one and then upgrading to the um, boost kit later on. I think we can get a cool shot of the pedals. All three of the pedals like that. Uh, what type of gear are you on right now, Norman? <clears throat> that's the most important thing to me um is enjoying it i know so many people who like have two thousand dollar wheels and setups and they like are just frustrated all the time and like cussing their gear cussing the sims that they're playing you know just really frustrated and i'm like aren't you supposed to be enjoying this you spent all that money on it and you're not even having fun when there's people with the lowest level gear and they're having a blast it's kind of funny how that can work uh what sims are you playing Jax? Sims, games, whatever you might be into. Ah, uh, did I unplug this? <clears throat> oh cool norman yeah like I, I i just love how sim racing can can be different things for different people you know for you it's like the only means you have to be able to race so that's awesome what kind of sims are you into are you i, I assume you're into the most realistic sims probably maybe i racing a set of course the competition r factor race room those those types Oh, my wheel got unplugged. Or my camera. Oh, sorry about that. Oh, cool. You adopted a G29. Hey, man. Say thank you to your brother. Forza and iRacing. Cool. Are you excited about Horizon 5 Ace Jack? I know they've just been putting out a lot of footage and letting some streamers get some early access. I'm really excited to see what the next Forza Motorsport will have to offer. Um, I hope it moves a little bit more in the direction of, um, if not hardcore sim, just having some more sim elements to them, to it, if that makes sense. Oh, you went all out on your sim racing setup? That's sweet, man. I've been kind of upgrading, you know, as I move along. I started out on a G29 like a lot of people. Then got a Thrustmaster, well, G29, G923, the Thrustmaster T300. Um, right now, I'm using a uh, DRS Direct Force Pro, um, which I kind of... 
Oh, cool. Um, yeah, I, I'm going to be swapping that out for the CSL DD to use it for a while. So I do have a little bit of experience with the direct drive um, wheel. I can see a smudge on the plastic. It's so triggering. It's really frustrating when I can't like get the light just right. It's like half my life is just like playing with lights. Not really half, but. Uh, yeah, Lucas, I'll, I'll grab some. After I finish getting a little bit of this B-roll, I'll kind of um grab some of the stuff I have going on. A lot of them are kind of in parts, but yeah, um, definitely be willing to give you some inspiration. Um, for DIY wheels, I tend to go for replicas. So, you know, trying to build a wheel to look pretty similar to what a real wheel in a real car looks like. So the turn GTE, which is um, a replica of the, oh man, is it the V8 or V12 Vantage? Uh, GT3 car or GTE car. Oh, Norman, you have the large midge. Damn, 30 newton meters is intense. All right, if you don't mind me asking, what do you actually um, race it at? So, like on the VRS Direct Force Pro, it's 20 newton meters um, max uh, torque, but I tend to race with it around 50%. Like I have raced with it at um, 20 Newton meters, but you know, it's, it's a freaking workout. Um, so I'm interested to see what you actually typically, uh, you know, race at. Or do you tweak it per card? You know, I know some people who say they, you know, they like a higher um, torque for certain types of cars. It is amazing the uh, fidelity you get out of a direct drive wheel though. Um, so who was it that said they have uh, H Jack? You said you have a G923. So if you've gone on ACC and like, um, use true force and you can feel stuff like the engine rumbling you can feel stuff like the curves in super good detail you can feel different road effects that's the type of stuff that a direct drive wheel produces just like all the time um almost regardless of the um the game and sim obviously different games and sims produce those effects differently but uh you just get so much fidelity on a dd wheel it's really really nice and then you know it's also super fast so when you lose traction and the wheel goes kind of light you a get that response really really fast it doesn't have to go through any gearing system or pulley system but b it also still gives you an idea of what the um what the grip is like so the first time i was driving the uh vrs direct force pro using the ferrari gt3 i was at um the charlotte roval and t1 is a kind of a high speed corner and i used to lose the rear of the car a whole lot and i remember the first time i i started to go into that corner at high speed and the rear of the car started to slip out and on the direct drive wheel you just get this feel of like the car is sliding and then i controlled the slide perfectly uh, rebalanced the car and just drove on that felt so awesome yeah get that workout on with the uh 65 so that's like 
18 20 newton meters that's pretty strong i know um there's a streamer dan suzuki who a lot of you guys might have heard of and he uh tends to race with his semi cube at 100 percent, which is just kind of insane like not as a force feedback uh challenge or anything he just says he views it as like an extra workout But that's what I'm going to be trying to explain in the CSL DD video is like um, for people who are coming from entry level gear, like the G923 with True Force is trying to produce a lot of the effects that you get through a CSL DD or through a direct drive. But, um, you know, it's doing it by trying to pass extra information to the wheel and using the uh, the rumbling motors to do it with the CSL DD and all DDs. It's it's just so much more it, it's just better um you know a, a, i don't think that surprises anybody that a dd dry, uh, direct drive wheel is better than a gear driven wheel with added effects but i can see what they were going for with true force after i tried to direct drive i was like oh that makes sense for true force they're trying to get all these extra feelings that you get you know, um, I think Fnatic has a setting where they can try to pass information, kind of like a, like rumble information from the, the wheel, uh, steering wheel and the car and the engine, all that kind of stuff. So they can pass some of that information. And that's what True Force is trying to get across, but without a direct drive wheel. I'm going to be very interested to see what um, Logitech brings up. You know, Fnatic, in my eyes, has been in the... Um, oh, it's so smooth. Uh, I didn't... You know, if you've only used a G29 or G923, it's hard to understand, like, when people say, oh, it's smoother, it's quieter. Like, I race with headphones on, so the noise never really bothered me. But then even when I tried out the, the Thrustmaster T300, I was like, oh, this is a lot smoother because it's belt driven. And oh, it's also a lot quieter. And then you try out a direct drive wheel and it's like basically completely silent and ultra smooth. And it's just levels, you know, like you're also moving up as the quality increases. Generally, you're moving up in price as well. Yeah, I can understand that. I know that some of the first generations of direct drive wheels were, I don't want to say hacky, but um, my understanding from people who use them is that they're not as streamlined in terms of drivers and hardware. Um, you know, the VRS Direct Force Pro took what used to be like a giant power brick and uh, like two encoder boxes or something like that. And from my understanding, combine it down into one kind of sleek option. Uh, the VRS might be a good option for you to look into. Um, of course, SimuCube 2 is a really good high-end wheel. I, I think that's kind of the standard that has been set for more modern stuff. And then we've got um, SimMagic, who is uh, based out of China. They're producing I think they have two to three different wheels, a kind of lower end wheel that's around the price range of the CSL DD. And then they have like an alpha, which is, you know, more of a $2,000 type wheel. And then there's a new company that just came out. I think they're based out of China called Moza. And they've got a very, very kind of like auto automobile, like uh, luxury car inspired setup. Um, a couple guys just put out videos on the Moza stuff. I think Boosted Media has a video and Dave Cam, if you've ever heard of them. Um, but I like seeing more companies producing more stuff, you know? Um, as more and more companies start to make these products, 
they're going to be asking for the same parts and more companies are going to start producing those parts and producing them for cheaper because they get economy of scale. Um, also, the technology is going to become more ubiquitous because they're all going to be looking at each other and saying, oh, I see what they did there. I can do that or I can do it better. So um, I think Fnatic is kind of ahead of the game in terms of the lower entry level wheels now for a direct drive. And Logitech and Thrustmaster have a, a lot to catch up, but talking to some of the people at the company, they're really, at both of those companies, they're really nice people, and I'm sure they have some cool products in development. Hopefully, you know, we'll see even more competition. All right, I'm almost done filming, filming B-roll um, for these pedals. Does anybody have any questions about either the CSL DD or the CSL pedals specifically that I can answer today. And uh, if not, I can go and grab a couple of the DIY stuff that um, I think it was Lucas asked about. Yeah, Norman, I think if you're looking to get something more modern, a semi-cube, 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 I can't say any of these brand names. Uh, will probably be the best replacement for you. I don't think it's as strong. What is it, like 25 Newton meters? But uh, I hear the force feedback is really, really nice. Um, are you talking about the pedals, Lucas? Um, if you are on console, you cannot use any pedals besides the Logitech pedals, unless you use something like a drive hub. Um... I think these CSL pedals are pretty competitively priced for just the two pedals. It's $79.99. And I forget how much the clutch um, edition is, but it's not very much more expensive. I think it takes it a little bit over $100. And then eventually when the, the low tail upgrade comes out, it'll be around $200. Uh, will the CSL DD be too powerful for the GT Lite seat? Let me look up the GT Lite, but I've seen people on fairly, I'll, I'll say low-end wheel um, rigs, you know, like not super expensive um, aluminum rigs running the CSL DD. I've used it on my desk, and I don't think it was too powerful for my desk um, with the 5 Newton meters or the 8 Newton meters. The, the desk moved around a lot, but I, I didn't I didn't have any fear of like it ripping off my desk or turning my desk over or anything like that. Um, so I, 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 I have a feeling that you would be good with a, um, a lighter, you know, um, seat. Let me look up the GT light seat. Hmm. OK, so that's like a, a tubular frame one. From next level racing. Uh, Norman, I have both the, the boost kit and I have the regular one. So when I first tried it out and I've only used it for honestly about five minutes so far, I unboxed it, got a bunch of films and then, um, had to sign off. Uh, I've used both the five Newton meter and the eight Newton meter. Um, so I can't give like a, a super detailed impression, but, um, with the five Newton meter, you get a lot of detail. You just don't have that dynamic range. So like one place i like to always test wheels out is on brands hatch at t1 where you're going downhill and um then you go into a compression zone and on the left there's a, a a curb and then to the left of that there's sand i like to go through that because it tests the wheel i feel a lot because you're in a compression zone so the force feedback is going to be really high right then you go onto the curb and it's going to have to produce that constant like you're um in the compression zone you have a lot of g's force but then also try to have to reproduce the the rumble of the curb and then if you drive off track you can really get you know a little loose and you have to you you're kind of feeling all three of those effects if that makes sense you're you're still you know getting a lot of g forces and compression so the wheel is trying to produce a lot of torque but then you're also losing 
the rear end of the car potentially and you're going over a rumble strip i like to use um conditions in parts of a track like that in order to kind of get an impression of how um how uh wheels produce their force feedback i'm not sure if that makes sense um i'm not the best at at sim racing at all this is you know fairly new to me i've gotten into it in the last three years so i'm limited in terms of my knowledge to the, the gear i've used so far um but i would suggest that people get the eight newton meter boost kit if they're gonna go with the csl dd because it's the best experience but you know like i look at it as i think fanatic essentially realized that this is the base model for this for me and i'm having a hard time articulating this sorry i think the base model that they came up with was the eight newton meter and then they were trying to figure out a way to and this is from my mouth this is not you know this is me just guessing they were trying to figure out a way to get the price down such that they can attract more people into the ecosystem and you know have a 300 dollars dd so the way that they figured that they could do that was splitting it into two different um power supplies um you know say what you want about that some people think it's anti-consumer or whatever they should just have the one and only make it 350 dollars. but i honestly think that it's a 650 dollars wheel that they then offered a a smaller psu for to get it down to 350 dollars i'm sorry it's not it's not 650 it's what 500 right because the boost kit costs 150 but that's the way i'm choosing to look at it and not everybody will agree with that but i think it's a 600 dollar or excuse me 500 dollar wheelbase and then they tried to figure out a way that they could make it cheaper if that makes sense or less expensive to get more people into it and you know at least you've got the choice there um I'm not going to say it's not worth it on the five Newton meters from my limited time using it so far. But I mean, if you're coming from a TMX, absolutely. You know, I, the, the five Newton meters is a huge upgrade from the two Newton meters. If you're coming from a G29, I think it's a really, really nice upgrade moving up to the five Newton meters. Is it as good as the eight Newton meters? Of course not. But um you know, offering people a little bit of choice, I don't think is that bad. Uh, I don't know. I'm, I'm going to need to do a lot more testing on it, and I, and I plan to. I want to try to take a lot of notes and figure out a good way to articulate all of this stuff so that it's, you know, it gets across to somebody like yourself, Norman, who has a lot more experience with DDs, you know, and you've used a very high torque wheelbase for quite a while now, and people who are looking to upgrade from lower end gear driven wheels and belt driven wheels i hope that makes sense um i've been thinking about this and kind of writing down some notes but it's kind of hard to articulate like freestyle off the brain so i'll be right back i'm gonna go grab a couple of DIY, diy wheels that um uh lucas who i hope you're still around um asked about brb
all right i'm back uh so norman asked with the fanatec pedals on display this evening do the do they offer load cell for measurements and feel with the brake um the ones i have do not there will be a separately sold load cell upgrade kit that you can buy um if you buy them as a bundle when it comes out they're aiming at a price of around 200 dollars but the stock kit the stock ones are 79.99 and they only come with the gas and brake and that's not load cell then you can also buy an upgraded clutch so you have three pedals obviously that's still not a load cell but eventually they will have a load cell um kit upgrade kit that you can purchase that will um that will have a load cell pedal and if it's anything like the csl elite load cell um it sh it should be fairly good i'm using the csl elite so my rig right now oh, excuse me and um i i like them a lot i think these are the csl uh pedals are fairly similar to them in the way that you can you know buy them in pieces and put them together the way you want to be the construction's a little bit different and the look is a little bit different um but I, I'm, I'm thinking that they're going to be a fairly good set of pedals for the 200 and you know 200 to 300 dollar price range. Obviously, there are much more expensive pedals like Hooksingveld and Sim, you know, all the ones that were at the um, uh, Sim Expo. But those are you know one seven hundred, one thousand, two thousand dollar pedals in some cases. So um, I have high hopes for them. But I'll as soon as the load sale kit is available, I'll request one from fanatic and um if it's if i'm not able to get one from them i'll purchase it myself to, to do a full review yeah i mean ace jack if it's 150 dollars to upgrade to the eight newton meters i think that a 500 dollar you know from 350 dollar a 500 dollar eight 800 newton meter wheel is pretty it's pretty good um i think what some people are slightly perturbed about is the fact that it's it's billed as a 350 dollars dd which it kind of is because one of the versions of it is 350 dollars but the version that you would want you know the higher end version is a 500 hundred dollar wheel um so on the table i guess first this one doesn't look like a D, uh, DIY wheel, but it is. This is a converted Thrustmaster wheel. So this is the Thrustmaster um, add-on wheel, the R300 383 um, Sparco. So it's a Sparco replica wheel. And what I've done is 3D printed and made a custom PCB adapter that turns it into a USB wheel. So I can use it on any wheelbase that I want. So in that regards, I call it a DIY wheel because I can use it on any wheelbase. So this has got a Q1R um, quick release on it and I can hook it up to the Direct Force Pro and it actually works on a direct drive wheelbase. I usually turn the force feedback down to about eight to 10 Newton meters when I'm using this. Um, and it's a very big wheel, but uh, I usually drive the Mazda with this guy. So that's the first, I'd say, kind of DIY wheel I've got on there. And I actively use that one. Next, I guess we'll talk about this guy. This is the first turn GTE wheel I, I made. I've stopped using it um, because it's almost all 3D printed. So even the... Oh, almost knocked my light over but even the front plate is 3d printed and you can see it has quite a bit of flex on it maybe you can see that um so then i started to build this guy which uses real carbon fiber um the button inserts are made out of a sls 3d printed material the grips are tpu so they have like a little bit of give to them and then i have um another one where i've uh, i've wrapped the grip so this is why it's taking so long to produce that that third video, Lucas, is because I'm trying to go over all the different ways you can build it. But um, these are really nice buttons. These are actually um, APIM buttons, the same buttons that Zach from Turn Racing used in his original version of this wheel. The encoders are CTS encoders, and uh, they feel really, really nice and clicky. 
uh the shifters i have on here are zach's um uh gen 2 shifters they feel really really nice they're magnetic hopefully you can hear that they feel really really good um so this will be kind of my favorite wheel once i'm finally done with it and you can see it's this is like these are the least expensive amazon buttons that you can buy um they're like five dollars for 30 buttons literally and these are the least expensive rotary encoders that you can find and they're not clicky at all you can turn them and you barely feel any clicks so that kind of goes to show you the difference between like these are like twelve dollars a piece for all of these for each of these buttons and these are like 10 cents a piece for each of these buttons these feel much clickier they have a much better response they have an ip rating that's much higher um and these buttons just kind of feel kind of dull and these encoders feel very very dull so that's the kind of the difference between you know a very expensive build where i'm using carbon fiber high-end 3d printing really high-end electronics and a low-end build where you know this works it's fine but it's not the best experience so it's you know up to you what you want to do let me see what you guys were saying in the chat Thanks, man. Not all of these are, are currently working because I've essentially like been taking them apart and using parts from one in another, if that makes sense. Um, the other wheel, this is another one of the first ones I built. And this is um, a Ferrari GT3, uh, like 488 GT3 wheel. This is just, I got the files off of um, Thingiverse, if you've ever ever heard of that site, it, it, it's a site where people put 3D printed um, uh, files up, and a guy made this, and you know it works fine, but it's uh, it's not the best replica in terms of like looking exactly like the real wheel. And again, I'm using like some of the least exp um, expensive components when I was just kind of starting out, and you know was just using whatever I could find on here. Um. Yeah, and I mostly use this on the G29 that I, I had a 3D printed adapter on the back so I could use it on the G29. And you can see I've actually taken out the cable uh, to use on another wheel since I don't use this wheel as much. And then this one is a really interesting wheel. This is the Cosworth um, LMP2 replica. Uh, and a guy named um, Pokorny, I think is how you say his name. Um, but I think... I don't know where he's from, but he produced the files for this wheel. So this has real carbon fiber on it. Um, the shifters are really, really nice. I've got another Q1R um, on there. It's got a really nice cable on here. And if I can figure out a way to plug it in. I'm not sure if you're going to be able to see that easily. But um, it's got LED lighting on it. And the screen actually works. So I think that's a representation of kind of a super high-end wheel. Um, the files cost like $50 altogether. I think I've put like $250 in it in order to get the PCB done and to get the carbon fiber cut and all that kind of stuff. So that's a super high-end wheel. Um, that will probably end up costing around 500 to 600 dollars when I finish building it. So Yeah, I've got kind of got a wide spectrum there. I hope that gave you some um, inspiration Lucas if you're still here Yeah, Sincut Sin is a great company. Are you able to um, Get stuff cut from them Norman. Have you checked if they ship to your area? Um, hold on. I'll be right back again
But yeah, Sin Cut Sin is pretty great. I've gotten both of these uh, cut by Sin Cut Sin. So this is a um, another version of this GTE wheel. That's Aston Martin GTE wheel. Oh, why am I zoomed in so far? Um, and then this is a uh, R R8 LMS wheel. And they, they cut both of those and they were like, thirty dollars each so they're super fast they provide instant quotes they have a bunch of different materials this is three millimeter um aluminum and it's super super durable i talk about it in the um diy uh, uh videos like three millimeter aluminum has almost no flex like i have to really really try to torque this thing to get any flex out of it Whereas five millimeter carbon fiber still has a tiny bit of flex. So um, Lucas, you were talking about using aluminum. You can get some really, really good results from aluminum. You can cut it by hands. It's pretty easy to, to, to drill through. You can use something like a scroll saw uh, to scroll saw through it and then use a file to, you know, it's just gonna be more time if you do everything by hand. But a service like Send Cut Send, they're pretty awesome. They also do carbon fiber now. It's a little bit more expensive um, to do carbon fiber from them and they don't have super thick carbon fiber, but uh, I highly recommend Sin Cut Sin. I'm gonna be doing this wheel. Um, eventually, you know, I've got so many damn projects. Uh, I need to finish up this wheel. I need to finish up the DIY series. I need to finish up that wheel and I need to produce videos on all this cool, awesome uh, Fanatic gear. So yeah. And then, uh, we're eventually going to get back to doing some content on this guy. <laughs> so the next time I stream, what I'm hoping is that we will be putting a wheel onto this guy. And actually using him and we'll have the CSL pedal set up on here as well and I want to do kind of like a live first impressions of using this in the actual race I might do um, an AI race first but yeah I also got a I had to buy this myself but I got a podium hub so I'll be able to hook up any of these DIY wheels to the CSL DD and get an impression of what it's like to use third party wheels on it as well. So that'll be pretty cool. Oops. Uh, yeah, I, I think 3D printing is one of the most like uh, it's one of the best tools that you can get in terms of being a diy maker um it just opens up so many avenues that you can do you know you can 3d print a front plate if you want it'll be flexible and probably you don't, wouldn't want to use it on your um your osw with uh 35 newton meters but you know for somebody on like a g29 they can pr 3d print pretty much an entire wheel but um uh, creality ender 3 is a great printer i have two of them and they're workhorses for me. Um, anything in terms of like button inserts, button covers, knobs, uh, grips, uh, rear enclosures, they can all be 3D printed for the most part on a, something like a Creality Ender 3. I, I, I print like 85% of my stuff on my Ender 3. Um, so I can recommend that printer. There's a V2 out now and there's also a Pro. Those just have some extra creature comforts. They're slightly more, um, they, they print maybe slightly better straight out of the box. Whereas with the original Ender 3, you have to do a little bit more tuning. Um, but a lot of them go on sale uh, and you can find them for less than $200 US. It might cost a little bit more to ship them out to you, Norman. I'm not sure how, like how much, you know, customs and, or VAT type stuff you have to pay. Um, but yeah, uh, 3D printer is a huge, a huge huge tool um you can also check out maker spaces and libraries um universities sometimes have labs that you can take in a, a usb file and they'll they'll 
print whatever you want for you. You can't choose all the settings and stuff, but like uh, I live in Blacksburg and the Virginia Tech Library has a 3D printing center where anybody can walk in off the street and say, hey, can you print this for me? And it'll do it. Cool, Lucas, I hope you got some inspiration. Like um, the cool thing with DIY is you can just use whatever you have, you know, you can set the price point and say, I'm going to build a wheel for $200. I'm going to build a wheel for $100. And then you have to make it work. You know, you have to find the components. You have to find um, the time and put the effort in. But you can build a wheel for $200. Or you can say, I want to build a wheel for $1,000. Um, it's, it's up to you and the tools you have available to you. And what you're able to learn, really, is the most important thing. Um, I highly recommend checking out the Turn Racing Discord if you want to get into any DIY uh, stuff. Discord is taking a second to um, open up. Laser cutter will be really, really useful if you want to produce some um, front plates. Uh, Lucas, you can ask them what type of materials they're able to cut. If they can cut acrylic, um, five millimeter acrylic can be really good for making a front plate. Um, several, several guys on the turn discord have used, um, have used acrylic, but, um, let me see how I can share this screen. Uh, this turn racing discord is awesome. Um, so there's like a general chat where people are, you know, just talking about what they're working on and, and what they're doing. You can see I just posted in here. Um, you can introduce yourself and, and people will say welcome and, and help you around. There's channels for 3D printing where people are just talking about 3D printing and showing off their 3D printed wheels and stuff like that. Um, a general project chat here. You can see somebody is working on doing some cutting. Um, here's somebody who is working on prototyping something. Uh, there's just so much information on here. You can see somebody doing a diagram for their electronics and getting help with that. Uh, somebody who just got some carbon fiber cut and is, you know, showing that off. Um, people talking about, you know, real wheels and how they work. There's so much information in here. I highly recommend checking out this discord, uh, coding and electronics. Um, people showing off what what their electronics look like. Uh, There's a really cool button box with LEDs that a guy made and he did a custom PCB for. This channel is just full of a lot of information. Hello. Is somebody um, in the chat watching the stream also in the Discord? Um, there's also this DIY, um, where is it? DIY resources and links. This is a treasure trove of information if you're looking to do DIY wheels. Look at all these links. There's links to encoders that people are using, links to buttons, different tutorials that people have found on how to wrap suede and how to get stuff cut, different services you can use to cut stuff. This is, I so highly recommend joining this, even if you're not super into DIY stuff, you can just come in here and look at, um, like you wanted inspiration for some wheels. This is like the Mecca for inspiration for wheels. All of these are DIY wheels that people have produced. And so this guy used a turn racing, um, wheel. And he also like has a, a custom button box. There's just so much stuff in here. Here's a really cool, uh, build of the same vantage GTE that I'm building. So much information in here. I highly recommend checking it out. Oh, Luca, was that you saying hi? <laughs> yeah, I, I really love this has been like the best community I've joined recently, and I'm really happy that um, a lot of people are talking about their wheel builds and sharing it because before there was like a couple of Facebook groups and now there's just like several thousand people who are, are sharing about, uh, you know, the wheels are on. Does the Fanatec Podium Hub have an internal electronic input options to allow you to wire buttons without an external USB cable. Uh, I think in order to do that, you need something like this. So this is the universal. Well, uh, what is it? Um, what I have is the podium hub. 
but the universal hub allows you to do i think what you're talking about so you see how there's like xbox buttons on this there's um inside of this you can plug a bunch of controls into it uh in order to do what you're talking about i think don't quote me on that i would honestly hop in the discord and ask people about it this is the first fanatec wheelbase i have so i'm not all that well versed in um the whole ecosystem and how to do diy stuff with it but you can see this guy was able to create this pretty unique interesting like kind of audi shaped wheel um and hook it up to his fanatec base This Discord, I'm so proud of like how how big it's gotten and some of the stuff that guys are doing. Like, look at this. That looks like a real freaking wheel. That's pretty amazing, in my opinion. This looks great. Like, I come in here every day and I'm like, oh, these guys are producing such awesome stuff. I want to do that. Like, look at this. This has got a real carbon fiber body to it. And a guy DIY this. That's amazing. He's using a really high end quick release there. But, um, you know, like different people have different skill sets. So their wheels look some are much more basic and some of them are much more advanced. Um, and it all depends on the skills you have. Here's what a finished version of that LMP2 wheel looks like. The Picorni. I hope I'm saying that right. I don't think I am. But that wheel that um, has the LCD screen on my desk. This is what the final version of that will look like. So. But um, I think I'm going to call it now. Um, thank you guys for everybody who tuned in and hung out and chatted, especially this was really a much more enjoyable experience um, filming all this stuff and chatting with you guys and versus me doing it alone. I'm going to hope to try to keep this up and do more of this in the future. Um, I hope I was able to answer some of your questions or many of your questions. And uh, if if not then um definitely hop in that discord as i've said like a thousand times but also feel free to um hit me up on twitter i have links to my twitter on um all my videos and on the channel uh instagram too if you want to send me a message on instagram i'll try to get back to you i like helping people out um as much as possible um pretty sure the podium is the replacement for the universal hub i read somewhere that behind the center cover of the podium there are little ports you can plug in i've seen a, a a screenshot of what you're talking about norman um i just haven't even taken mine out of the box you know um so i think you can hook up maybe like two button clusters or four button clusters but i don't think you can do like you know that might be like eight buttons and then a shifter module but i don't think you could do like a a, a full-on wheel with like 20 buttons and five encoders if that makes sense so I, I think I know what you're talking about. Like I did remember seeing a um a screenshot. Um fanatic podium hub buttons. So yeah, they sell these cluster packs that you can buy, but I've seen people who've also done DIY versions of this. Um so yeah you can hook up oh there it is there's the circuit board so it looks like there's one two three four five different ports on this that can take in inputs obviously Fan fanatic wants you to use their their buttons and their button clusters and shifters but I, I have seen people who've done diy like this like they figured out what what circuits connect to what um outputs and they're able to use their own diy stuff But yeah, I'm going to call it here, guys. Thank you guys again for, for coming in. Um, if I don't hurry up and stop the stream, I'm going to chat all night. But uh, I'll try to, you know, make a notification of when I'm going live again. And hopefully some of you guys can show up and chat. But if not, cool. Um, I'll be putting out videos on all this Fanatic gear and some more DIY stuff soon. Um, I know it's taking a while, Lucas, but I'm trying to get it done. I'm just trying to make sure it's uh, as complete as possible, if that makes sense, and, and goes over as much as possible. So thank you, guys. I'll see you later, and uh, have a good night. Cheers, Norman. Um, yeah, I'm going to get heavy into the DIY stuff. All right, I, I got to go. Stop, stop holding me here. <laughs> see you guys. Have a good one.